Well, we're in this series called uh, The Habits That Make You, and we're talking about developing spiritual habits. And we've talked about some habits so far. Uh, We're going to be talking about some more coming up that are going to be very, very important uh, that you learn to develop. We've talked about the spiritual habit of prayer, and uh, we're going to be talking uh, in the coming weeks about the spiritual habit of faith of what that does in your life. And so today, we're gonna talk about developing the spiritual habit of feeding yourself. Now, I have here a high chair. And unfortunately, there are many people that spiritually speaking, they're still in their high chair. They demand to be fed. And I got a couple pictures to show you of when I was a baby. Now, when I was a baby... I sat in a high chair, okay? And I'm gonna have to turn around because I can't see. Oh, this is me at one year old for my one year birthday, all right? And uh, my mom was telling me to blow out the candles and I didn't get very close. I was just like standing away, you know? It's kind of like, how do you give CPR to a person with bad breath? It's like, (laughs) like that. It kind of looks like what I was doing there. Let's go to the next picture. Um, This is me. I I don't know. I was clapping. I don't know why. Uh, Maybe I was happy. Even as a young kid, I was happy when the Tar Heels win. All right. So, and this year I'm not very happy. All right. So, um, let's go to the next one. And that's me. I don't, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing there. Uh, Let's go to the next one. And that's me with that goofy look on my face of my jaw dropped wide open wondering what in the world is going on. And I still have that look, okay? So now let, let me, let me kind of uh, just ask you a question. Now, when I was that age, it was appropriate for me to sit in a high chair. I was talking to some family members uh, uh, coming in, carrying their babies this morning, And uh, so cute, so fun, Uh, carrying a little child, little baby. That's wonderful. But at my age, what if I had a high chair in my kitchen? Now, I don't have a high chair in my kitchen, okay? My kids are all grown, and Kim and I don't have any grandkids yet. And so there is no need for a high chair in my kitchen. But what if... I had a high chair, and every day I climbed into my high chair, and I demanded, Kim, feed me! Now, uh, you can probably imagine what she would say. And I look, my wife is sweet and wonderful and the nicest person ever, and you can't hardly get her to say a bad word at all. I mean, she is just like honey drips off her tongue. But if I sat in a high chair and demanded, I promise you there would be some unchurch-like words that would come out of her mouth toward me. And that would be appropriate because let me ask you this question. Would it be healthy for me as a man that's been an adult for many years to demand that somebody else feed me? Now, if I had a physical, a physical condition, uh, let me get that out, a physical condition, okay, and uh, there was something wrong with my health and someone had to feed me, then that's appropriate, okay, and, and that's kind. But as a completely capable adult, if I demanded that someone else feed me, then there's something wrong with me physically, right? Right? And the same is true spiritually. Now, make no mistake, the Bible does tell us that pastors are to feed the flock. My job is to lead and to feed. My job, mainly according to the book of Ephesians, is to equip you, the saints, to equip you for the work of God. I, my job is to equip you to live the Christian life. My job is, yes, to feed you and to bless you and to be a part of that. And that's part of the reason that we come to church. So please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not suggesting that I should never spiritually feed people that listen to the preaching of the Word of God. I should. That's my job. That's my calling. However, 
If all you do is depend on me, you're not going to be very healthy, spiritually speaking. If all you ever do is depend on someone else to feed you without developing that hunger, that ability to be able to feed yourself, then you are not going to experience all that God has for your life. Now, let's be honest. If you've had children and you help them learn to start feeding themselves, it's a wonderful thing, right? I mean, you know, when a kid first starts learning to try to feed themselves, it gets kind of messy. They get it on their face. They get probably more on the floor than they do in their mouth. They hold the spoon upside down and try to eat stuff, you know? And when they do that, you take a thousand pictures with your phone. They didn't do that when I was a kid because they didn't have cameras on the phones. Um, In fact, I'm not even sure they had color film when I was a child. But nevertheless, uh, back then, you know, you didn't. But it was still cute because when a child begins to learn to feed himself or herself, then you just have your heart warmed. Oh, look at that. He got it all over his face, but it's so cute. Now, let me give you a different perspective. If I do that, and Kim and I go out to a restaurant, and I'm getting it all over my face, and I'm holding my spoon upside down, and I'm getting it all, of, all over the floor, people are going to think either there's something wrong with me, or I've had way too much to drink before I came to that restaurant. You know what I'm saying? Okay? And so here's the point, and you don't need to miss this. If you are going to grow spiritually and become what God wants you to be, If you're going to experience, and we're going to read this verse, the abundant life, the kind of life that overflows in your Christian life, not a perfect life, not a life that is free from problems, because that doesn't exist. But if you're going to live the kind of life that God has called you to live, that Jesus said that he came to give you, you've got to learn the spiritual habit of feeding yourself. Now, Most of the time when we hear that, we think about just reading the Bible. And that's true that reading the Bible is a part of that, but it's not the only part of it. And I want to help you today to learn how to develop the habit of feeding yourself spiritually. Mark Twain said one time, it ain't the parts of the Bible that I can't understand that bother me. It's the parts that I do understand. And in light of that, I want us to read a passage of Scripture that we're going to understand. And it's going to challenge us. It's going to challenge us to greater self-feeding. It's going to challenge us to grow spiritually. It's found in Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 to 14. And the writer of this book says this, You have been believers so long now, that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's Word. Let me just pause and ask this question. How many of you have been a Christian now for more than one year? Raise your hand. Most of the crowd. All right, let's, let's do it a little, little deeper. How many have been a Christian for more than five years? Raise your hand. Oh, a lot of people. How many have been, let's go up a little bit. How many have been a Christian now for more than 20 years? Raise your hand. Still a lot of people. Now, I have been a believer now this year, and I'm hard, I can't hardly believe this, is 50 years. For 50 years, I have been a follower of Christ. Now, look, here's what he said. You've been a believer for so long. And whether that's just a few months, or like in my case, it's longer than 50 years, the challenge is to learn to feed yourself. And here's the thing about feeding yourself spiritually. A lot of times we we get the Christian life, we kind of check the box. You know, been saved, check the box. Been baptized, check the box. Join the church, check the box. But here's the thing about real Christianity and the kind of spirituality that God wants you to have. It's a daily thing. Now, how many of you, you only eat food, and I'm talking about real food, on Sunday after church? 
And you don't ever eat the rest of the week. Anybody? No, you couldn't really live at least very long if you did that, right? I mean, you know what I do, and I'm sure you do the same thing. I feed myself every day. Every day, unless there's something like I'm on a special diet or on a fast or something of that nature. I never, listen to me, I never fail to feed myself unless it's on purpose, okay? And, and here's the point. If you're going to feed yourself, you got to learn to do it regularly, okay? Now, we're going to talk about reading the Bible, but it's more than that, okay? So he said, by now, you should be able to uh, teach others. Now, that does not mean everybody's been called to be a pastor, or if you don't have a seminary degree, that you cannot talk about your relationship with God. What this means is that every one of us should be confident enough in our faith, not that you have to know everything about the Bible, but that you can engage with other people about your relationship with God. You should be able to teach others. You say, well, pastor, I don't really know that much about the Bible. Well, you can fix that, but you don't have to know everything about the Bible. You don't have to be able to argue with biblical scholars. What you need to learn is what your relationship with God is like. And here's what people can't argue with. They can argue about theological points, but they cannot argue with your experience. They cannot argue with what you know. And and so um, he says, by now, indicating that we should grow spiritually. So here's what he says. Instead, you need someone to teach you again. And that's a key word, again, again. Now, the truth is, we need reminding. And he's not talking about being reminded or being refreshed. But he's saying that there were some people that they were a Christian, they are a Christian, And they had a relationship with God and they were growing, but now they are not. They stopped. And man, do we not have a culture filled with people that are experiencing that right now? So many Christians. Uh, You know, I've shared this statistic with you before. Did you know that over 50% of people that used to go to church before the pandemic on a regular basis no longer go to church? Here's what he said. He said, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. He said, you're like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. In other words, uh, there are so many Christians that are in the high chair. Now, there's nothing wrong with being in the high chair if you're a baby. In fact, it's a wonderful thing. I would not expect your six-month-old baby to sit at your table with a knife and a fork and start carving up a steak. That would be inappropriate. Why? Because they're still a baby. But he said, you've been saved for so long now. You've been believers for so long. He says, but some of you need milk and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Now, the, the indication here about spiritual feeding, feeding yourself spiritually, is not, listen to me, not for you to get a bunch of Bible facts in your head so you get this big old giant head. That's not the point of learning about the Bible. Just because you can name all 66 books of the Bible and spell the names of the books correctly, In Bible college, I had to do that. We had to learn the names of all the uh, books of the Bible in order, and we had to be able to spell the name correctly. And I got to be honest, I graduated from Bible college, and I got three degrees from seminary, um, and uh, I still have to look up how to spell some of the names of the books of the Bible in the Old Testament. I I read something from the book of Habakkuk the other day. Forgot how to spell it, all right? But... That's not what he's talking about. Just because you can quote all 10 commandments, just because you can quote the Lord's Prayer, just because you can uh, quote the Beatitudes does not mean that you're doing what he's talking about. 
Okay, Let, let's look at what he said because this is important. He says, for someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know the books of the Bible in order. Is that what he said? Doesn't know how to argue with someone if they don't believe or do believe in Reformed theology. No. Uh, he didn't say, for someone who lives on milk is still an infinite and doesn't know how to talk to somebody about speaking in tongues. Nope. That's not what he said. So the point is not just to get lots of interesting facts from the Bible. Here's what he said. He said, who doesn't know how to do what is right. And it's not just, he's not just talking about right from wrong. He's talking about how to live your life. Do you know there are a lot of Christians, spiritually speaking, and it's not because they're not smart, but it's because they're still on milk. They haven't learned the art of feeding themselves. They are still on the high chair and they, just like what this writer said, they don't know how to live. God is more interested in your knowing how to live than he is you knowing a lot of interesting facts about the Bible. Just because you know some obscure names from Old Testament characters doesn't mean that you really have fed yourself spiritually. I'm going to even take it a step further. Just because you have read a lot of interesting stuff about the end times, about the rapture and the tribulation and the second coming of Christ, is that important? Yes. But just because you know all the latest uh, teachings about that doesn't mean that you have learned to feed yourself spiritually. Because what he's talking about is the application of the word of God to our life. And, and if you know lots of stuff, good for you. I'm glad you do. I would say that it's a lot better to know stuff about the Bible than it is to have the entire Braves lineup memorized, okay? Now, nothing wrong with being a Braves fan. I'm a Braves fan. But God wants you to learn from the Bible how to do what is right, how to live your life. Then he goes on and says, solid food is for those who are mature, who through training, there's that word, training, exercising, working at it, being diligent, not just a one-time thing, who through training have the skill. Did you know that you can develop skill in the Christian life? You can develop more skill in your faith. You can develop more skill in your living. You can develop more skill in your praying. He said they, they have discipline, they've practiced this, they've gone through training, they have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. Once again, he's not talking about, um, you know, that you don't, you know, uh, smoke, dip, or chew, or run with girls that do. That's, that's not what he's talking about, the difference between right and wrong. Um, I had someone ask me one time, Pastor, is it a sin to drink beer? And I said, light beer, yes. Uh, but, you know... <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. But here's the point. God's word is necessary for spiritual growth. God expects us to grow spiritually. In other words, you've got to put some effort into this thing. You've got to be motivated. So this idea of developing the habit of feeding yourself, it involves a few things. It involves hearing the Bible taught. That's very important. So, yes, should you feed at church? Should the pastor teach the Word of God? Yes. But it also involves feeding on the Bible personally. In other words, reading the Bible, listening to it or whatever. And by the way, you can do this. Uh, I've just this year, uh, I've been doing this for a while, but this year I, I set a goal. I'm going to listen to the entire Bible just while I'm driving in my car. 
And uh, I've already gotten through about a fourth of the Bible already. Just instead of listening to talk radio or sports talk or some nonsense on the radio. I, and I don't do it the, everywhere I drive, but I, I'll do it about 30 minutes a day while I'm driving. And I'm going to be able to listen to the entire Bible. Now that's, you know, that's easy. That doesn't require any time that, uh, that you have to even set aside for this. It is just real simple. But the point about it is not just listening to the Bible and reading the Bible. You've got to develop the skill to live the abundant life. This is what we're talking about when we're saying you got to develop the art or the habit or the discipline of feeding yourself. Now, it requires a couple of decisions. It requires you to do something like what I just gave an example of. That while I'm driving this year, I'm going to listen to the Bible. You say, well, I don't have the ability to do that. If you own a smartphone, yes, you do. And if you don't own a smartphone, then maybe you need to buy some cassette tapes because that's how far behind you are in technology, okay? And uh, you can just put it in while you're driving, and I promise you it's going to help you. And you say, well, what do you mean about developing this habit of feeding yourself spiritually. Well, going to church and hearing the Word of God taught, yes. Reading the Bible, yes. But there must be something in you that desires. Remember, we read about this, this desire for the Word of God. Now, what does that desire mean? What is having that desire? It means that you're going to not just depend on church or what you hear at church. It means you might actually... God forbid, okay, now this is going to be harsh for some of you. It might require that some of you actually read a book. Now, I realize some people say they don't like to read. Now, guys, listen to me, and I'm talking just to the men here. If you are in a fantasy football league, or basketball or baseball. You like to read because you read about every player that you choose on your team. Okay, so don't tell me you don't like to read. It's just that you like to read what you like to read, okay? Can we admit that? All right. And so the point is, once again, it's not that you don't have the ability. And it's not that you don't have the opportunity because every one of us drives, okay? And it's not that you don't have something to learn. It's that you've got to learn to exercise, to train yourself to grow spiritually. So what does that mean? Okay. Um, Yeah, you, you need to maybe listen to a podcast on something that helps you grow spiritually. Uh, there's thousands of resources on YouTube that'll help you. Um, reading a book, uh, picking up a class of some kind, uh, going to small group, okay? Talking about financially, we've got uh, the Financial Peace University and you can grow because you have a desire to do something better, okay? So what does it mean to develop? Now, I've got 11 minutes and 16 seconds left according to my timer, okay? Okay. And if you think I'm going to pay attention to that, then uh, God bless you. Okay, so um, I want to use the acrostic GROW, G-R-O-W, okay? This will help you grow. Number one, what do you do? You get ready. If you're going to feed yourself spiritually, you've got to learn to get ready to do it. Psalm 55, 17, I will pray morning, noon, and night, pleading aloud with God and he will hear and answer. So there's no bad time of the day to pray. And once again, uh, long doesn't mean strong. Uh, You can pray talking to God. Psalm 36, eight, we feast on the abundant food you provide and you let us drink from the river of your goodness. You gotta prepare your heart. And then John 10, 10, Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So what do you got to do? You're going to grow, get ready. Well, you got to make a decision, first of all. You got to say, you know what? I'm going to grow. And by the way, the Holy Spirit helps you grow. 
you know, we talk about mentors and we talk about reading books and listening to podcasts. You know who the best expert on spiritual growth is? The Holy Spirit of God. He'll help you, okay? So you, you got to make a decision. Then you got to choose a time. And I would say that making sure that you put this in your schedule is incredibly important. Whatever it is that you do, reading the Bible, praying, reading a book, listening to a podcast. Um, it, look, you got to make time for it. That's the point. We're all busy. And, you know, most of the time when we say we don't have time, if we're really, really, really honest, we spend a whole lot of time on Facebook or social media. We spend a whole lot of time binge watching stuff on Netflix. Okay? Now, I'm not meaning to offend anybody. All right? I know some of you say, well, Pastor, I didn't come to church to be offended. Well, where do you normally go? All right? Church is as good a place as any, right? <laughs> and then you got to make a plan. And then I think one of the most important things in growing, you got to ask God. I would encourage you, before you read the Bible or listen to it, just say a simple prayer. God, speak to me today. And you know what will happen? He will. Grow. G, then R. What does R stand for? Read. You got to read the Bible. That's pretty obvious. 1 Peter 2, 2, desire the God's pure word as newborn babies desire milk. And then you will grow in your salvation. So in other words, he's saying, um, you know, milk is the word of God and you've got to graduate from the high chair. You've got to learn that as you grow and as you mature, that you need to get some meat in your diet. Now, for all my vegan friends, all right, spiritually speaking, you're not to be a vegan. Now, if you want to be a vegan and leave more meat for the rest of us, then God bless you, all right? And I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a secondhand vegan. Uh, my food eats grass and vegetables and stuff like that. So I, I'm secondhand vegan, all right? So, but what God is saying here is this. You got to develop spiritually, okay? And the metaphor there is, is important to note that he compares the word of God to milk. So you got to learn to grow. That's the point. You're to grow from it, just like a baby grows from milk. Matthew 4, 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So God wants you to live by the word of God. Then you need to listen to it. That's coming to church or listening to it uh, on a podcast. Jeremiah 3.15, and I will give you pastures according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Man, just hearing the word of God taught will help you is what he's saying. Ephesians 4, 11 to 13. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people, just like I mentioned a while ago, to do his work and to build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will, we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. So God says, uh, you're to listen to it. It'll strengthen you and help you. And then grow, G-R, you got to get ready, you got to read it, and then the next thing is, oh, you got to obey. Now, what good does it do to read the Word of God or hear the Word of God taught if you don't do what it says? Um, 2 Timothy 3, 15 to 17, there is nothing like the written Word of God for showing you the way to salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Every part of Scripture is God-breathed. And useful one way or another. Showing us truth. Man, we need truth today, don't we? We need something that we can stand on. Uh, exposing our rebellion. I, I'm just being honest. I'm very rebellious sometimes to what God wants in my life. And so are you, if you're honest. Uh, he says, uh, correcting our mistakes 
Training us to live God's way. There's that word again, training. And what God wants us to do is learn how to live, not just gathering facts from the Bible in our head, but learning how to live. Through the word, we are put together and shaped up for the tasks God has given us. He wants you to live, and he wants you to live his way. So we're to obey, James 1, 22 to 25. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free... Man, that's one of the great benefits of of growing spiritually, feeding yourself spiritually, reading the Word of God. You can become free, free from addiction, free from the pain that we live in, not necessarily the experience of it, but the burden of it. And what God wants us to learn is to be free from fear. He wants to free us in Jesus Christ. He said, uh, if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. And so we're talking about growing. How you do feed yourself? Well, the last thing is this. You got to grow. You got to get ready. You got to read the word of God. We're talking about not just reading the Bible, but having this desire, this, this ability to go forward. You got to obey. And then the, the last part, very important, W, you got to worship. That's a part of this experience is to worship God. You got to meditate on what you have learned or what you have read or what you have heard. Think about it. Don't just put it out of your mind the moment you leave church. Listen to Psalm 1, one of my favorite passages of Scripture. Blessed is the man. By the way, that Hebrew word for blessed is a plural word and it means blessed, blessed. Any fans of Ren and Stimpy? Anybody ever see Ren and Stimpy? Okay. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. That's what he's saying. Bless, bless, bless. Happy, happy, happy. Um, anybody heard the little song from the movie, Everything is Awesome? Everything is awesome. Now, once again, faith trumps facts. What I see may look like problems, may look like trouble, may look like impossibility, but faith trumps facts. What I know may be different than what I see. What I know is that God is with me. What I know is that God blesses. What I know is that God has promised to bless me in this life and in eternity in the life to come. I am blessed blessed. I am happy, happy. I have joy, joy. Everything is awesome. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. doesn't mean you never have pain. It means you're blessed. There's a difference. He says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, It's easy to get in that seat, isn't it? Scornful, complaining. I was listening this morning in the book of Numbers on the way into church about the Israelites. They began to complain about everything. And it made God angry. He had blessed them so much, had worked on for them so much, was with them so much, and they just complained. Well, we do that sometimes, don't we? We just get in that seat of the scornful. Man, this ain't no good. I can't believe how bad this is. No, don't be that way. Get out of the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, the word of God. And in his law, he meditates day and night. In other words, you you maul over it. That word meditate, you know what it means? It means to chew on it. You just think about it. You just think about what you heard. I shared this morning in our pre-service meeting um, that little is much when God is in it. When I give what I have to God, God is in it. Little is much when God is in it. You know what? You can just chew on that and think about that all week. 
Because sometimes we get discouraged, right? But he says, you meditate on it day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. You want to be prosperous? That word prosper, Bible word, means that God pushes you forward. It doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to have a fat bank account. Now, God promises to supply your need. But the word prosper means that God's going to push you forward. In other words, he's going to help you. How many of you would say that God pushing you forward in your business, at your work, in your family, in your marriage, with your kids, that's a whole lot more important than a raise? You know what I mean? Okay? That's a whole lot more important. Uh, Somebody asked me, Pastor, one time, if you could have God's blessing on your life, him pushing you forward in your marriage, in in your life, in your plan, and living for God, or millions of dollars in the bank account, which one would you take? And I didn't hesitate for a second. I said, I'd take both. Uh, So, (laughs) since we're talking hypotheticals, right? I take both. No, the point is this. God will push you forward. He's going to be blessed. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. You know what? I've not always been a success in everything I've done. I've failed in a lot of things. I've started businesses that didn't survive. I've taken financial risks that fell through. I didn't take others that I should have. There's been so many things that I've done that I just said, you know what, I wasn't very good. I was, for a period of time, I was a head men's basketball coach at a Christian college years ago. And um, we were so average that our record was exactly 500. That's how many games we won. Won exactly half. We lost exactly half. Now, I'm, I'm glad that I don't have to judge my life by the success of my tenure as a head men's basketball coach. Now, if I just had better players, all right, I still wouldn't have known what to do with them. But nevertheless, we probably would have won a few more games. But here's my point. God will push you forward. I've been successful in life not because I haven't failed. Man, I've failed a lot. But you know what I can never say about my life? Because I've given my life to God and I've tried to serve him. There has never been a time in my life that I was not prosperous. I don't mean financially. There has never been a time in my life that I was not prosperous. You know why? Because I worship God and I grow. I get ready. I read the word of God. I take it in. I obey it to the best of my ability. I don't always obey it. I'm not lying to try to tell you that I'm perfect. I'm not. And neither are you. But God wants us to prosper. We worship him, and then we're successful. We will prosper. Then, final things, memorize. In worshiping God, get the word of God in your heart. It's going to empower you. Psalm 119, 11. I'm going to read this from the Living Bible today. I have thought much about your words and stored them in my heart so they would, not hold me, so they would hold me back from sin. The old King James, which I memorized as a kid, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Now, here's your assignment this week. Memorize Psalm 119.11. If you haven't already memorized it, memorize it. Read it. It doesn't matter what translation. It means the same thing. If you get God's word in your life, it's going to help you. It's going to equip you. It's going to empower you. That's what God's saying. And it'll keep you from straying Um, And then what I would like to offer, and we've only got 15 of them left, uh, but the book that I wrote a few years ago uh, on Psalm 119, it's about devotions and reading the Bible. If you'd like to get a copy of it, if you don't have one already, we're getting rid of them for five bucks, all right? And so um, they retail for $299. (laughs) So you're getting a deal today. I'm just kidding. They're only like 210. So, um, but um, 
If you'd like to get that, it'll be a help to you. But make a decision to get out of the high chair spiritually and start feeding yourself. It's a spiritual discipline. You say, what if I don't know what to do? Like a baby, getting some on your face. You think God's mad at that? No way. You know what he looks at? Just in the same way that you look at your kids. Oh, look how cute that is. That's so awesome. She is learning how to feed herself. And I think in the same way, it brings joy to the heart of God. You might be a little messy. You may not get it exactly right. That's okay. But start today. And I believe God will bless you for it. We hope the message you heard today encouraged you and strengthened you in your walk with Jesus wherever you are. If you know of someone that could use today's message, be sure to share it with a friend and also hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single message. If you feel led today to give towards the mission and vision, you can do so by clicking the give button on the screen. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.